Hello everybody, this is Jennifer Brewer. I am going to follow up a little bit about software for educators that Ms. Younger has previously explained. Um, this is chapter three in your text if you want to follow along. Um, I'm going to try to be brief with everything because it kind of is a lot, but it can be condensed if you follow along closely. So software for educators. Um, we use software for several reasons. Uh, it's essential that we understand how to operate computers just because they are so vital in our careers these days. Um, education and administration and all sorts of things use computers for everything just to kind of make everybody's lives easier. Um, it's really important for us because of all the, the teaching and academic advantages that software can allow us to help with. And uh, educators can use this to stay organized, essentially, as well. Uh, we have web applications that are involved with our software. A uh, web application is just something that allows access and interaction with software from any device that's connected to the Internet. It's sometimes called cloud computing um, when you're talking about using a web application. Um, the website where the access is granted on the computer is called the host. Um, Sometimes you'll be asked to download a software just to, in order to be able to use the application. Um, and many apps that you have on your phone are also available as web application. And it is a little controversial. Are a web application and an app the same thing? Um, an app is generally a one-use uh, primary it serves one primary purpose, and a web application most likely can uh, serve multi-purpose. It has several tabs, downloads. You can go from one tab to the next and stay um, on the same page but have several functions. Sorry, I got a little tongue-tied. Um, software suites, things like Microsoft Office, Microsoft Office uh, Apple iWorks, uh, those are the most common ones. It's a collection of individual applications sold as one single software package. So um, that's going to be a lot more timely and less costly for you as well. Instead of spending all your time downloading Microsoft Word, Microsoft PowerPoint, Microsoft Excel, Publisher, so on and so forth, you download Office and you get all of the things in one package. That is really handy for schools, especially, um, just because they're a larger organization and it's a lot easier than having to install things one at a time. That saves time and money, like I said. Um, and the easiest part about the software suite is that apps within uh, usually use the same interface, so you don't have to learn how to use every single application within that package. They're, they generally have the same interface, so if you learn how to use one, you're going to be able to learn, you're going to be able to use the others just as easily. Um, there are softwares for specific things, just like graphics and multimedia. A lot of, like, productivity softwares um, are good for schools and, and businesses and whatnot because they have the productivity factor. Um... Some others, most other softwares are designed for a specific field of work. Just like graphics and multimedia, you know, that's going to be for any kind of art, creative type career. Uh, the desktop publishing, um, it allows you to design and produce, you know, of course, paint, image, all of those things. Clip art, you're sh I'm sure you're familiar with all those. All of these are considered graphic and multimedia softwares. Um, some even come already installed on your computers. Uh, I know clip art does, but you can purchase a broader spectrum of clip art um, that just gives you a bigger selection for things. Um, multimedia authoring is another one of the softwares that's used to create electronic presentations, simulations, software demonstrations. Uh, you know, so on and so forth. All of these have something to do with graphics or multimedia, and it is used most likely for the specific creative purposes of other types of careers like that. We also have these softwares specific for school use because they are so handy in how a school functions and maintains itself. A district can use a different type of software for 
uh, their budgeting, their uh, scheduling, their email is considered a software, you know, a school district has all of these things that keeps everyone linked, everyone up to speed on what's going on, and it makes everything efficient, organized, and just a great tool for a school to use. Gradebook is a specific uh, software that is very popular, of course, with educators. Um, it just takes grade work to the next level. You're able to track classwork per student. It c you can track up to thousands of students in one um, account. So it's just ideal. Instead of like this image here that has multiple students, multiple little tiny text boxes that you have to individually write, what your student made on a grade, uh, how they're, you know, added up at automatically. It's just a lot more efficient and less time for you as an educator trying to keep up with all these students to have a gradebook software that makes it so much easier. Um, these K-12 educational softwares, they are wonderful. They support teaching and learning of subject-related content. Uh, there are computer-assisted instructions where the computers enhance the instruction. It could be a learning game, um, a learning tool, any type of thing along those lines. And the computer software will then enhance that learning for the student and uh, just make sure that the skills associated are really understood and taught as um, as it would be in a classroom as well. Uh, the drill and practice, skills reinforcement and remediation go along with drills and practice. And when you think of drill and practice, literally think of drilling something into your brain the more you practice. Um, a drill and practice software supplies factual information and then through repetitive exercises, uh, the students continue to work on specific specific materials to remember the uh, facts and learning and the skills reinforcement that is exactly what the drill and practice is it's effective for learning basic skills and then for remediation which is the reviewing of the content um, it uses alternative means means to help a student grasp the concepts being taught so it may kind of manipulate or you know, modify a thought to where a student might understand it better. Of course, educational games are always a great software used in a classroom. It has a set of rules and then students can either compete against themselves or the game. And it's just a f more fun idea of learning a concept. And then tutorials, of course, are any type of teaching program designed to help you learn how to use a project or concept. So all of these softwares contain a tutorial within so that you understand how to use the software in your classroom. More educational softwares, uh, simulations, integrated learning systems, curriculum specific, creative, creativity, critical thinking, early, early learning, foreign language, language arts, math science, social studies, and special needs, all of these things have a software for you to use in your classroom. I always thought with simulations, um, it could it kind of modify or kind of mocks a video game. You're doing something on the computer, but mimicking like a real life event. Like I know that the Sim City, it literally teaches you how to live in real life, or so it seems. You know, you build houses, you build communities so on and so forth, creativity, uh, critical thinking, all of these, it's it's teaching you how to use your creative part of your brain and your critical thinking part of your brain. All of these softwares can be used in the class to um, help you with those skills. And then special needs, I mean, there are softwares for teachers that help with a special needs classroom. Um, students that know they're gonna need uh, speech therapy, or extra emphasis on reading they these softwares actually help to enhance that type of learning for each type of learner um, to make sure they're getting what they need out of everything um, softwares are of course just like anything there's a home 
type software and a personal type software uh, just like there is for school. So we discussed school softwares and how it can be used specifically for curriculum and learning and standards and all the criteria need, needed for school. There's also Hermit home and personal use software, just like uh, personal finance software, which is basically a simplified accountant on your computer. Online banking is considered a home and personal software just because it's your bank account condensed onto a onto an easy to use and maneuver web page. Um, there are tax preparations and legal softwares that are, you can be your own tax person and your own lawyer, like you use these softwares to learn these types of things. It helps you get ready for your taxes, helps you prepare legal documents. There's entertainment software specifically for leisure and entertainment purposes. And then there's always the learning and support tools, just like the tutorials in the school softwares. Um, uh, all these other resources, upgrades, different software, all of that has to do with um, what are within the softwares. Online help is equivalent to like a user manual. Um, upgrades are um, each year or so a manufacturer develops a newer version of a software package and it's usually just assigned with a higher number. So like uh, version 4.0 to 5.0, you know, for example, um, there's going to be an upgrade every so many years and then you just have the option to upgrade for a better version and then you know different software versions it can cost different but most schools don't want to up upgrade just because the newer releases it's just a new version it's not necessarily any better it just might you know work out a few quirks or whatever um anyway so software is an essential part of school home personal life uh, it, it's just designed to help us and make things easier for us. And I hope I've briefed through this quick enough that you'll be able to go back and really understand and grasp these concepts. And I hope you enjoyed it. Thank you.